What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hot Pop Boys. Uh, we got a very special NYC-based episode today. Uh, we are joined by the famous Kareem. That's it. That's me. Yo, hot, can you hot, introduce hot, yourself real quick? Hot Pop Boy number three. That's that's my introduction. Do hot they eat pot. Hot Pot in Egypt? Is there a such thing? They have dishes inside of Hot Pots, but they wouldn't be traditional Hot Pots. All right. They're North African Hot Pots, uh, aka Tajine. <laughs> it's Tajine, North African Hot Pots. All right, so we want to talk about you're a native New Yorker, right? Can no, you, I'm oh. from Minnesota, but I look like one. Yeah, dude, that is what that's I the act biggest. Like wow. How long you been living in New York for? Twelve years. So right. officially, I am a New Yorker. But you, but you make a lot of New York content. You're well known for subway takes, a uh, bunch of other stuff. I mean, we'll pop it up right down below in 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 supers. But I guess. We got to talk about how New York has changed, even in the 12 years that you're here. Because you're one of those transplants, and I feel like we may fall into it, but we haven't been here as long as you have, that are like kind of dedicated to New York. We're like, yeah. yo, I like New York. I want to be here. I'm not just here for a couple years, unlike a lot of other people. My plan is to stay here. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the major difference, and on a serious note, is that some people come here and they contribute. They contribute to the culture, they contribute to the food, they contribute to the vibe, they contribute to the fun, mm. like whatever, they contribute. Other people come here and they exploit and they take, 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 but they never give back. And I think that is the difference between a person who lives in New York and a person who is a New Yorker. Mm. Like I, and, and I think you can contrib contribute in any way, shape or form, but I guess it should be culturally in some capacity. You know what I mean? Like contributing funds you're just rich you but mean just spending money on expensive <laughs> it's still, yeah. it's still a, i would say that's still a contribution <laughs> but on the low level <laughs> it's 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 the it's like donating it's the cheapest like paying taxes is a donation based kind of entry into new york because it's six percent on top of the 10 per well like, i don't even know how much i get taxed anymore right. they, they keep going up and i just keep paying <laughs> but yeah no i th i think that is what makes the difference between a adding clay to the slip versus if the if the slip was made out of cookie dough, they're just coming in and they're just they're eating, eating it. it. Where you're like, yeah, I'm eating it, but I'm so I'm also adding to the so slip. So what does it mean? Because I heard this quote before: is give more to New York than you take. Like let's be let's let's just point out certain archetypes of people that we know now in New York, right? We got a lot of transplants. We got a lot of software engineers coming for tech. Nothing wrong with that. Do your thing. They make good money. They're a lot of work from home. They live in nice apartments and stuff like that. But what what is can we criticize them? Of course. Let's do it. I mean, their contribution is literally not. Their their contribution is turning New York City into whatever city they left. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like it's like the immigrants of the past were like, oh, I'm going to come to America and make it a better place and be a be I'm going to be a better person and I'm going to have like some American dream. They're just like, oh. I work from home in Cincinnati. I would like to work in New York from New York or work from home in New York. Right. Well, hence, I guess, why there's so many like raising canes and everything that's opening oh, up. Dude. What do you feel about that? These like, because I feel like 50 50. I feel torn about it because I'm like, I, when I used to live in the suburbs in LA and a raising canes opened up in like Alhambra, California, I thought it was cool because I was like, all right, this is this weird chain from Florida. <laughs> I only saw it when I did uh, college shows at Florida State or UF, you know what I mean? And then now I'm like, okay, that's like more, I guess a hyper local thing from Florida spreading nationally. Yeah. But when I see it in Manhattan or when I see it in New York, I kind of don't like it. So I think that with those regional change, chains, I think with the re uh, la, 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 I think with the regional chains, I kind of with regional chains. You like know what I mean? Raising Canes. Yeah, like I kind of thought, like, cause there was no Raising Canes in New York and uh, now they have like a grand opening. There's like, I don't know how many there are. Right. There's, but, it seems like they're opening up time. <laughs> but you know what's heavy in <laughs> but the no, city? But they're contributing. Right. right. It's, it's not like they're opening up more Taco, like how many Taco Bells are in Manhattan, by the way? Not Not enough. that many. Not enough. <laughs> I'm legitimately Wait, serious. How, are there too many Stickies? I don't even know what that is. No, so Stickies no. is the local chicken tender chain. That was started by New York. Not no, 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 I'm, I'm not, not a lie. New Yorker. I'm not if gonna it's lie. New York the the raisin canes taste better than stickies. It does, but uh, is anyways. Popeyes from New York? No, no way. It's from Louisiana. Well, that shit. Hey, it? but there's every that's everywhere too. Yeah, not in Minnesota. All though. right, what does there, all right, Kareem? What does there need to be more of in New York now? Taco what Bell. We, more Taco Bell. Uh, what's the you next? You like one? the Taco Bell cantinas, the ones that serve oh, the alcohol fancy ones? and stuff. Those are the fancy ones. That's where I take people on dates. My girlfriend on dates. They go to Taco Bell cantina. Yeah, I'm like, hey, do you want to get Mexican food tonight? You want to you want to try some no, nice okay. local Tex-Mex? Honestly, though, Dairy Queen, have, do you guys know? Yes, yes. yes. They, they only have one. 
Oh, there's only one in New York, though. So yeah. we could use at least where, one. Where is it? Pinkberry. Bring it back. Mm-hmm. Were you guys around for the Pinkberry? I think a lot days? of Pinkberries just went down, period. They're just gone. Yeah, I think, Wendy's. Uh, CEO, not enough Wendy's. CEO caught a case. Mm, you Wendy's. don't like somebody. I think Wendy's is mid. The, That's crazy. The never frozen patties. <laughs> I haven't had it in a long time. Okay. I would, I'll gotta retry it. I'm a, I'm a Wendy's fan. I'm a Wendy's. What is there not the enough of in New York? Um, I guess, how do you compare the the New York chains like a 7th Street Burger versus an incoming Smash Burger chain from, let's say, where Smash Burgers well, were created, California? 7th Street Burger is not a chain. That's the difference. It, but it's it, a chain it, in the it, sense that now that there are two locations. There's like, no, no, there, no, there's, there's a like lot. Oh, they're like... They blank, expanded, expanded. They're like Blank Street Coffee? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a local no. chain that it's like... Oh really? Oh, I thought there were only two locations. No, Several. No. So they're like they're literally the Blank Street Coffee of burgers. Yeah, but it is at the same time <laughs> from the area. No, I don't mind that. I think that's fine. I, I think I f- with that. I would rather have Seven Street Burger than Smash Burger simply because it's more delicious. You mess with Blank Street Coffee? No, or, no, no. It's not good coffee, right? It's just whatever. It's Favorite a- coffee chains in, in New York that have chains? multiple? Perfect. Will have multiple locations. I mean, that's what I, I like. Mean. Grumpies. Okay. You guys are grumpy. Cafe Grumpy with the, one, with the smiley one. face. With the smiley and, face yeah. also because it was in Girls. I f- with Girls, that show. Okay. Um, Ray Ray from Girls worked there. He's a fictional character. Right. She, in she a real place. Yo, that's interesting. I didn't even know that. Fictional did, character. Did you, did you like uh, Broad Street? What was that? What was that hyper local show that was all about LES? Broad City. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good show. Um, Zaza Shops. What do you think about all the Zaza Shops that obviously have. Uh, are there too many Zaza Shops, Kareem? Yes, that is a resounding and yes. No, 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 not just Zaza shops, I meant exotic snack shops. Have you have you done a sketch about that yet? Because yeah. let's be honest, with the look, you could... If I, go, if I pop in the Zaza shop and I see... Uh, look, there's some Kareem's the in bars. the shops. <laughs> if, I, if I do a Zaza shops exotic sketch, which I will do, you will get credit. Okay. <laughs> because it is a really good idea. But Z- Zaza was like a fun novelty, but like everything else, it became washed and played. Like I remember when there was one Zaza Exotics, I was like, mm, that's that's fun. That makes New York Exotic cool. Exotic right? snacks. Yeah. I like like Cheeto, like Kit, the green Kit Kats from Japan. Fire, where else am I gonna get them? Zaza Exotics. Now, the snacks ain't even exotic. <laughs> that's funny. Like, no, what, no. What, like what have you just, you just Now saw, they just got like saw, regular Kit Kat. Right, they don't have yo, the green one Kareem, anymore. Can, can I, can I, I'm, I'm going to rock with you because the first time I walked into those exotic, exotic snack shops, I saw some like Japanese Oreos and Japanese Kit Kats. I was like, okay, kind of exotic. I went to Asia, so I know <laughs> this, this stuff is not that crazy. But then I was asking the guys about snacks and I had no ideas what, what these shops were at first. I was like, hey, so like, uh, are you guys going to carry this snack? And they were like, <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I don't know. You, and I just found bro, out that they didn't know anything about the snacks. Bro, I think exotic snacks is code word for marijuana. Right. So you went in there asking about literal exotic snacks, and they were like, why is this freaky creep? Like, this isn't Halloween, bro. This dude's. Ho- They're probably like, bro, all the Asians don't he's, even get he's it, not, man. He's They're coming out there. in here asking for the Sakura special edition Tokyo Kit Kats. I don't know. About he's out it. here trick or treating. Yeah. He's out here trick or treating. Says, oh, do you have do you have the I green? Thought, uh, do you have the, the green Kit Kat? It was the weirdest like, shop. It was the here. weirdest shop. It's wide open and there's like not that many snacks. And I was right. like, why is the colors like yeah. this? This is so weird. This is the weirdest the, snack. The, shop. the whole time we were Bro's unaware, and this was was way early in the in the process that it was almost more like the bodega scene from white girls when they're trying to get the ice cream delivered wait what's white girls uh marlon wayne's and uh the wayne's brothers oh you that remember that scene in new york so where the bodega is getting delivered ice cream from the russians i gotta be honest i don't remember the scene okay it's the first it's okay scene. we'll it's pop it up anyway that's a crazy we'll question to say keep it moving do you remember um, that scene do you think that the like the transplants, do they need to care about the pre-existing old New York culture of like coffee and bagels and all, you know, get a slice here and like maybe more newer, hyper-local New York culture, obviously from Harlem, uh, you know, chopped cheeses and things like that. Is there any, you know, you were, we were talking about giving and taking, do people at least need to know what a chopped cheese is? Or, too? Yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, when you sign up for health insurance and you have to put down your pre-existing conditions, I think that there should be a test for... New York transplants that they know some of the pre-existing conditions of the right. city. Mm. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Stay or go. Chopped cheese. What? Stay, stay to go. Yeah. That you said it so fast, I almost slipped up. Right, right, right. You almost caught me slipping, bro. Stay or go. Stay or go. Because uh, I, I, I still get caught by that, but I always remember that's how they say it. <laughs> what do you say? Oh, you know something I could never get behind? 
when you go to the pizza shop and you say, I'll have a plain slice instead of cheese. Oh, yo, I didn't even catch that yet. No, they say, they say plain. Like that's the slice, like a cheese slice is a plain slice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which I didn't, I thought it was a cheese, well, like where I come from. Right. Cairo, Egypt, just kidding. <laughs> where I come from in Minnesota. But it's, okay, when you go to Minnesota, they call soda pop. Like, I remember I a, that. We, we grew up oh, sometimes saying pop. Yeah. Which is crazy. I've never heard anyone, if you said, hey, can I get a pop at Raising Cane's? They're like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, from Minnesota, can I get a fizzy pop? <laughs> and then in the South, Everything is called Coke. Right. Like, it's all just, I, just different types of Coke. But it's all Coke. Like, you just say, can I get a Coke? But it's like, which one? Seven Up. Oh, yeah. right, right, right. No, that is interesting. Well, I think Coca-Cola is based in Atlanta, what, right? I don't what, know if What that did matters. you think about how they kicked that dude out of the city for getting the scoop bagels? I they, couldn't tell if it was a fucking joke or not. You mean when they bought him the ticket out? No, when he actually did that thing. I was like, oh, this is a comedian. Turns out he's a real guy. Yeah, I thought he was a comedian too, actually. <laughs> I thought he was like the West Coast version of you. Oh, yeah. Like doing, yeah, doing yeah, the exactly. super deep cut. A like, good deep bit. Kareem, yeah. I got a question. Do you think all the New York meme pages, what does it do for keeping and preserving New York culture and giving New Yorkers a platform to judge and like almost be accountable for other people? Because there's probably five really good meme pages. I, I like when they make fun of people who like i don't really know I, I don't know how i feel about the transplant thing i'm kind of just like people make mistakes they're dumb you're, i mean you're, transplants have always been a part of new york yeah and you you like if you've been here for two years like i was a fucking loser when i was here for two like the first two years i was here on one hand i was like this is the greatest city in the world i love it i want to eat everything i want to do everything i want to experience everything on the other hand my videos were so cringe and my content was so cringe because it was not in the know so the meme pages that make fun of i think I think the meme pages that make fun of deep cut New Yorkers are more funny and interesting because they are literally like anthropologists, right? Like yeah. I would rather study the culture than study the people new to the culture. And I think what the meme pages do is they're, they're literally studying people who are in too deep, people who got lost in the sauce. Right. Like, like if you're standing in line at Emily Andor and you live in New York, I'm like, bro, you're lost in the sauce, bro. Like, we right. lost him. But if you're a tourist and you're standing in line at Emily Andor, I'm just like, whatever. No, you're like, They're that's visiting. what you're supposed to do. Yeah, but, like, right. the ones standing in line that are just, like, standing in line, not even to shop. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're into, like, you're you're literally, they got you. Yeah. Yeah. The most they New York thing you. is still probably waiting for a supreme drop that you're going to flip right after you, right after you copy. That's, but that that's also what I like about all of the different niches. Because, like, you wouldn't be, I wouldn't be caught dead doing that ever. Mm. Because... I have A, no interest in clothing, B, you, no interest in flipping anything, and C, no interest in standing in line. Right. <laughs> but like, for a lot of people, it's a way of life. And that is another thing that's so nice is that there's so many micro communities in the city mm. that you just you just plug yourself into the one that you affiliate with most. Right. You can be, I mean, everyone knows you can be whatever you want, you know, you can make it. There's a tribe for every vibe. Yeah, oh, is that is that an original? I mean, Vibe and tribe have been. I think I saw it in a neon LED sign. But, but I really think in New York, like a Zaza Street, shop. There's one thing I realized is true because, like, uh, I ride a lot of scooters right around the city. Scooter and that, gang, yeah, and those electric are, gang. We're yeah. we're electric gang. And there's a lot of different gangs for the scooters. You could be Dualtron, you could be Cabo Mantis. Like, we're talking about like specific models. And do you guys have conversations about them? Uh, like, do you ever stop I, a guy? I'm not in a scooter? part of those because I ride like the really ultra light joints. But I'm saying that I know people that are like. I'm in a dual Tron gang and we're going to ride out. Yeah. They got 30 the with, the, with the yeah, LED. Yeah. Yeah. It's going crazy. Yeah. Man. Because like if in, in a, in a smaller town, you would be doing that alone. Yeah. Cause you can't find 30 people. <laughs> you can't like, even find about one. The dual Tron life, you right? can't even find one. Cause no one's going to ride to the seven 11, like four miles away to get some Zaza's oh, right. uh, on their electric scooter when you have a car. And, and you know what we, I used to see more of was the EUCs, the unicycles. Like, I feel like those gang, those groups, those gangs, I mean, we have some friends that are deep in that world, but I, I feel like they, I don't know if it peaked, but like well, that I was hot I, two I, years ago. And then like, they've been replaced. Well, I, I, I definitely, they've been replaced by a different kind of one wheel, the electric. So I, all the unicyclers, this is a fact, all of the unicyclers in New York now have one wheels. The not, not a literal you one mean wheel. the skateboard one wheel. The skate, yeah, they all oh. converted. Yeah, yeah. The because one wheel, was, the one wheel is a different tribe too. They're a little operation. bit more uh, skateboard. But that's why the unicyclers have gone extinct. 
You're talking about the unicyclers that were on the That's a theory. <laughs> That's the true. Yeah, they're like a tiny unicycle, like a, a guy riding a tiny unicycle in park. No, I'm saying uh, the, the electric park. unicycle. No, I'm saying that the tiny guy, the, the big guy riding the tiny unicycle yeah. in Prospect Park, he is now riding a one wheel. What do you think? How do you think the skate? Because that is the modern day unicycle. That is true. Mm. That's true. How do you think the skateboarders perceive like, the electric skateboarders? Skateboarder, they probably think that they're so lame. Yeah. <laughs> No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, Eric Adams, he's the mayor right now, and he's a particularly, I guess, like clippable mayor, right? Like, memeable. Kind you, know, of. you know, there's mayors like I don't think Bloomberg, outside of him taking the train every morning, was that memeable. You know what I mean? Like, there's a quote in Succession. Do you guys watch that? I know what you're talking. Where about. Logan Roy says, "You are not serious people," to his kids. That's what I think about Eric Adams. Right. He's <laughs> he is not serious people. He's literally having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> he's, it looks doing, like it. he's doing the mayorship so he can have fun, which look, I guess if I was in his shoes, I would do it too. It's lit. But he, I don't think he wants to be a mayor. He wants to be a celebrity. Like he would probably come on this podcast. We probably have a hell of a time too. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. We wouldn't, probably we wouldn't be signing necessarily the-, no. the He wouldn't be on here to be like, look, I'm proposing a new bill. He would be like, look, I got a plus two at zero bond tonight. <laughs> like, right. do you guys want to come? You know, he's, he's trying to get his numbers up on Instagram. Right. He's That's like, why he's here. He's like some crazy guy. <laughs> he's, not, he's not trying to get reelected. He's trying to like literally take selfies with Ariana Grande. No, it's true. It's true. He, he got some funny quotes though. But yeah, as far as policies and the execution- on a, a bad on a mayor, strictly functional level. Bad mayor, good personality on social media. Right, and it, easy to make fun of, which is fun. Yeah. In a way, very twenty twenty three. Yeah, um, he's, he's like the movie. He's he's he. Everything has become like the film idiocracy. I, I look at that. I use the word film instead of movie. Right, which means that I'm an expert. Yo, that's funny. It, honestly, you're right. And we haven't used that comparison in a while, but it feels like idiocracy more and more every day. Yeah. Comes to fruit. And now it's normal. Now it's like not even idiocracy. Nobody can even bring that up because everybody's accepted it as the normal baseline. Yeah, it's just like this is America. Um, what do you think about like your show on the train? Like, why is it become so successful? Why why do people relate to it so much? Because obviously we're talking about hyper New York things, probably one of the most defining traits in New York MTA. Well, I think for one, everyone has an opinion. But when you go to share your opinion, you want to sound sophisticated and have an opinion about something important. I think Subway Taste gives people an avenue to express some an opinion that doesn't matter. Like, an unimportant like it's made for, but, but there's, what's funny is it's an unimportant opinion to most people, but I think everyone's in on the joke of like making it serious. So when, when you say something like Jack Harlow should be able to say the N word, which was a Subway Take, not mine, Assad's, he's a f- brilliant, funny comedian. Love the kid, H- amazing. How viral did that go? It was, I mean, it doesn't even matter how viral it went. The the comments debating this topic right. were so fucking funny, and analysis and perspective about literally something that no one in the world has ever th- thought about except for Assad. Like, why why was Assad thinking about that? Why was he saying, like, why is that his take? Yeah. Why did he come on the show with that right. opinion? And I think the reason that it's so successful is because it's engaging, because you are learning about the ways that people think. Right. People are treating it like ethnic studies 103 at Wesleyan, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, Again, it, it goes back to anthropology. Like, stu- Subway Takes is a study of what New Yorkers are thinking about right. while they're sitting on the train versus while they're sitting at work or where they're sitting at home. It's like, when, when you sit on the train, like, this, to me, the train is kind of like the shower. You're just standing there and, like, some great ideas come to you and you're like, well, I got to write this down. I got to record a voice note. Like, I do that a lot on the train. Like, I'll just be, because you're just standing there. I don't read. I'm anti-book. So I'm just <laughs> sitting, I sit there with my thoughts. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea or that's a really funny thought. And I think that's where a lot of the best, it's, it's like being in the shower, except there are, 40 people coughing and sneezing around you and like some little kid in with a nose in your do, do you think that shower meditative almost like third state where you're floating will go away once the trains have actually good um, Wi-Fi at all the stations 
Because you know how it's only like very select right now, that's, probably like what twenty five percent. That's a really so you can't question. like a lot of times, especially if you got a if you got a, a boost mobile or something like that. You forget it. You are not getting signal in the train station. <laughs> yeah, dude. They, but but like, will that change once people are able to fire? That's it an interesting question. I think what's happening more and more is that it become it's become a personal choice. Do you want to be on the internet right now or do you not? So I have to think about that before I take my phone out. I'm like, do I want to use this moment to not be on the internet? Because I'm on the, my screen time's seven hours a day. Right. That means that in my waking hours, which is probably how many hours, 14? Right. I don't know how long people stay awake. So half of my time is spent on the phone. The other half, I'm on my computer. So like, I don't know, bro. It's a choice. You got to be like, I'm not right. using my phone right now. Right, right, right. Because the they've added system. that recently. I want to say in the past, what, three, four years, you can get cell service now. Yeah. So you have to make the decision. Do you want to be on your phone right now? I think, I think we'll see a 50-50. I think a lot of kids, especially young people, as much as they are addicted to their phones, they're also a lot better at regulating and managing their screen time than I think people our age. I don't know how old you guys are, but I would assume you're millennials mm -hmm. and not Gen Zs. Yeah, yeah, for are sure. Are you? Mm -hmm. Millennials. Yeah, so millennials, I think, are more addicted to their phones than Gen Zs are. And I think Gen Zs have the ability to be like, I'm not going to use my phone today. And I think millennials don't have that ability, or it's a struggle. That's be, interesting. Yeah. Because they were born with it in their hand. Is it kind of like how the boomers can't really regulate their, like, beef intake? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, milk? Yeah. <laughs> it's oat milk. part of my life, man. How you going to milk an oat? <laughs> how you going to milk an almond? What do they got next? Sunflower milk? I could see a boomer getting real upset about a new milk. Oh, new milk just dropped. I guess uh, there's protests. In the last last question, topic. Last topic. About New York, man, where do you see it changing? You know, a lot of people have talked about how the city is so rich now, the Dubaiization, the Londonization. Um, obviously, New York for a long time was a place for local people. Then it sort of changed. And I want to say with the work from home advent and uh, short term furnished rentals, People, so many people are in and out of the city. People are doing three month stints in Lisbon and, and everywhere, Tulum, Bangkok. New York is also one of those stops as long as you have the means, good, bad. I mean, people are like, I know New Yorkers that are like moving to Guatemala for like two months and then coming right back. And I'm just like, what's going on? Is anybody even from anywhere anymore? If, if only we could be so lucky to have the Londonification or Dubaiification of New York City, because right now we're getting the Cincinnatification and the Denverification of the city. Like, everything that looks rich is a piece of shit. Like, all these buildings in Williamsburg. Hudson Yards? Yeah, it's, a, it's like, it, it is rich for no reason. Or it's like some, it, or it's like, it looks rich, but it's actually made so, of shit. So is it just gonna continue? Are we just gonna have like, more no, and more New York City's not becoming a grandiose, wonderful city. Like, look, I don't fuck with Dubai, but at least it's actually well built. I don't, I mean, I guess I fuck with London, but those cities are great. Like they're great cities that are being built. Mm. New York City is becoming mid because we're allowing developers to make it mid. Like we're not making it nice. We're not making it cool. We're not making it interesting. It's literally just shitty. And the problem is there's no housing. So people accept a shitty apartment that you pay $10,000 a month for, but it's not even fucking nice. It's actually just shitty. So that I think is the big challenge is that like they're shoving mediocre down mm. our throats and making us pay top dollar. Like I would pay top dollar if it was a top dollar product, but it's simply not a top dollar product. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's mid. And that is the, I think that is the biggest threat is that New York becomes mid, not like rich, you know? Right, because it could be rich and fly. It could be, yeah, it could, like, Dubai, as much as I don't want to live there or be there, I would visit. I have visited. And it's fun. Hong Kong, fun. Rich. Ty to Tokyo, fun. Rich. Like, right. these are places that are cool. They maintain an aesthetic. They maintain a vibe. And that's because they're regulated in a way that, like, oh, cool, look at this building. We're going to make it, like, actually special. Whereas in New York, it's like, let's put up a building that looks like it should be in Santa Fe. Right. You know, like, <laughs> like it doesn't even belong in any city. It yeah. looks like it's a, like belongs next to a lake in Milwaukee. Right, right. I guess what building are you talking about? Do you have one I'm talking about the general aesthetic of the new buildings being built. Yeah, no, it's true. It's like, true. Especially, I think Williamsburg is the ugliest and probably the worst neighborhood in New York. 
right now. Say it, say it again from, real quick from the for the worst, clip. Can you say it again for the clip? I think Williamsburg <laughs> is the ugliest and worst neighborhood in New York City. Woo! Right, because you're saying what? They all used to have the old Dutch architecture, and then, then, it, was, then it was just all glass. It just right? used to be interesting. Uh, I'm not even saying. Uh, aesthetically, yeah. Aesthetically, it's not even. It's like you've got the all glass, and then you've got those weird colorful joints. That are They're like trying to be artistic. That are like They're red art- and blue. You know, well, you the know developer the was like, well, you know, Williamsburg is an eclectic neighborhood, <laughs> exactly. so we're gonna add some color it's in the so, buildings, bro. It is so ugly. No, like, they, give me brick. It reminds me of this. Give really, me some concrete. You ever been to Oakland? They have this Alameda School of Arts. It is so ugly. It's like an art school that is. Hey, no, just to you guys, but like. It just remind. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, like it's like somebody's concept, an unartsy person's conception. Right, of exactly. And I think I'm convinced that they're not even doing it because they're artsy. I'm just convinced that like a piece of red uh, plastic is less is, is cheaper than some concrete or some bricks. They're just like, oh, cool, we can buy this piece of plastic and put it on the side of a building. <laughs> they literally are just putting pieces of plastic on the side of a building rather than like putting up some concrete or some bricks. So. I th- I don't know. I think I think that place is so ugly. I used to live there, so I can say that. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like uh, I, I always thought that uh, Williamsburg kind of gave me like Texas vibes. Like it's all the hipsters from Texas moving. That's why there's so many like Southern fried. But it's, it's the stuff. thing is, it's not even hipsters from Texas. It's people cosplaying as hipsters from Texas. Crazy. I know what you mean. It's like Inception. It's very meta. Yeah. It's like I, double. I, it's I, like I actors it. acting. Kareem for mayor. Kareem, run for mayor, man. Bro, At I least can't. cultural mayor. I can't. That, <laughs> cultural. There needs that, to be another. I don't know if you guys position. are going to manage the NYPD now budget. Now <laughs> that is an idea. I you mean, they need created to be that. head of New York media, or you need to be one on the no, on the board of New it. York head of internet media. Okay. Internet right. uh, architect. Kareem for the New York City head of digital media. They, I mean, they have the Social rat media. czar, so that, that's yeah. a newly created position. So we I need to start, start a more board. like street version of the Met Gala. You know how that was for like all the old money used to run you right. run and still is to some extent. Wait, the Mets Gala. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. The like Mets where Gala. would we ha- where where we where would we hold that? Oh Probably no, a bar no, place. no. You'd call it the, the Bet Gala, like no, Bet, the Brooklyn Internet Gala, Internets. Okay. Throw it at Barclays. Let's go. All right, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that uh, segment about what is uh, changing and what is still the same about New York City. Uh, Everybody check out Kareem on social media and uh, let us know what you guys think of our hot takes in the comment section below. Check out sauce.com. All right, everybody. Thank you. Until next time. The sauce is good. The sauce is good. (laughs) Peace.